Welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Aaron. I'm your host, CEO, Black Fly on the Wall Productions. I am here with the no, none other, Chase Morgan of Henry Mass. Chase, introduce yourself to the people. Yo, what's poppin' them, Chase? Tell me a little bit about yourself, man. Where you from? Where you from? Uh, so I'm from Memphis. Um, I grew up in Memphis. Um, I'm from like everywhere. My parents, my parents are military. So, you know, like every few years we moved around um, to different states, but we settled in Memphis when I was like 13. Okay. And yeah, that's where I grew up. Nice. So all the people in Memphis, all the people in Memphis, what's up? All that great music coming out of Memphis, all that good food coming out of Memphis. Yeah. But once again, uh, I'm Aaron, um, familiar face to you all, hopefully. But I'm the CEO and producer of Black Flower on the Wall Productions, and this is a one-on-one -on -one interview with Chase Morgan, who's the Chief Operating Officer of Henry Mass. Pretty sure you all have seen these masks on a few NBA players, athletes, celebrities, family members, whatever it may be. But tonight's segment is entitled Behind the Mask. And the intention of this segment is to provide listeners with an insight on what it was like to be a creative, but not only a creative, but a black man that's a creative um, during the pandemic. And especially since Henry Mask uh, took off um, during the pandemic, as the mask mandates rose and, uh, you know, we had all of these different things that we had to do in relations to masks, I believe, you know, black people, of course, how we are, we like to be fashionable, whatever we have to do. So what I want right. to do is just start with a little bit of, tell us how um, Henry Mass started. Um, man, how it started. Well, obviously the pandemic happened, right? Prior mm -hmm. to that, prior to that, um, we were operating, um, my brother's uh, is Rich Fresh, right? So we were operating all of his production. So I was a production manager with him. Okay. And um, prior to that, I used to be a, an aircraft mechanic, was a flight mechanic. Right? I used to just fly around the world for a living. So it all started where I saw something way before the pandemic ever even took place in Tokyo. It okay. was like 2018. Um, I, I get to Tokyo and there's like 29 million people that live there, right? And there's like 30% of the population was wearing face masks. Wow. Mind you, this is before the pandemic. And this was from the SARS outbreak in 2013. Mm -hmm. And so people were just still wearing masks in 2000. I'm thinking it was like some shit that my, only Michael Jackson did. You know what I mean? Like I had <laughs> right. no idea until I get over there and I saw it. So fast forward, you know, here we are. We have, we have this factory. We're pumping out, you know, luxury garments. We have master tailors. Um, you know, some of them are 60 plus years old, you know, but they're like really great tailors, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, the pandemic Those are the best happened. ones. <laughs> oh man, I mean like so much experience, right? Right. And um, and so we, we own the manufacturing company as well, you know, so we're responsible for these people and their health and well-being. And, um, you know, some of them wanted to go back home, like to Korea. Uh, because they were like, shit, I'm not dying here in America. I'm going back home. I don't know what's happening. You know, the world right. shut down, man. And um, so I'm trying to find masks on Amazon. And I'm looking for masks so I can give them to the employees. You know? Um, mm -hmm. And we couldn't find them from anywhere. It was taking like three or four months on Amazon just for a regular 20-pack of face masks. Yeah, show. it was. It was crazy. Right. So I go to Walgreens. It's the same thing. We couldn't find them anywhere. And so I we... We just had this vision, you know. It was it was it was a conversation. It was like, yo, we can't get masks from anywhere. We got to make them ourselves, and we did. And um, I think we ended up having a conversation one day. We were in the car, and um, one of our buddies called, and he like Facetimed us, and 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 we had on a new mask. And he was like, yo, where'd you get those from? Because he owns like a staffing agency. He's got like 1,500 mm -hmm. employees. And he's like, where'd you guys get a mask from? I couldn't get one from anywhere. And we told him we made it. So he was like, you can make them? <laughs> so he was like, I need 500 of them. Wow. And, uh, so that's how it started. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Man, I, 
you know, the masks are insane. I love them. Um, I'm a healthcare worker myself. So right. I've, I've been working the entire pandemic up until today, you know. Um, and one thing for me is the the quality of the mask, how thick it is. Um, the, the number one thing I love the most is the fact that you can talk in it without having to touch it and pull it from your face. Absolutely. Um, my mom texted me the other day and was like, yeah, I just ordered the lanyard. Um, they had some lanyards in stock. And she was, yeah. she was in the family group chat and she was like, yeah, I, I got 27 Henry masks. I just counted them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's crazy, right? That's love, though. Yeah, tell your mom, I appreciate that. Oh, yeah, that's love. And so, you know, she loves them. She say masked up. I love them. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I also, I lo also like to match them up with what I have on my attire, which is another thing I love, too. Um, and, and as I saw as a man, as I saw how the pandemic was transitioning, I first, I saw it in maybe November of 2019. I said, we're going to be wearing masks for a long time. And so, yeah. and so I think that's the creative thing about Henry masks, the fact that they're functional, they're fashionable, and it's something that can uh transition throughout time right so we're talking about time as far as a year and a half plus two years that we've been dealing with the pandemic um i like the fact that they're washable too so to everybody out there uh this is an amazing product um and it's black owned so talk about your relationship you, you mentioned your brother rich fresh um he's a very popular guy um the suits are going crazy i see them all over the internet talk about you all's relationship and partnering up and deciding to do this as a family and it was kind of a, it was a no brainer, you know, like me and my brother, we always, since we were, since we were kids, you know, we were always plotting these business ventures, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so we, I don't know, it, it was, we used to, we used to do ascots, you know, yeah. we, had a belt, we had a belt company. <laughs> um, we had a, like a, a hangover company before. Okay. So, you know, we, we were just always like, you know, just creating and building something and wanting to build something. Um, so for this one, yeah, it was a no brainer, you know, like like I said, we already had the shop, we already had production, we had machines, we had people there. Uh, nobody was really, uh, nobody was really buying clothes at that time. You know? Right. It wasn't nobody a priority. To see any. Yeah, it was like, I don't want to be around anybody. Yeah. You breathe on me, you might die. You're chilling. You're chilling. Yeah. Chillin'. Right. And so initially what we wanted to do was we, we were starting like a t-shirt campaign, right? Um, and because we realized they, they shut down the school. And so in LA, homelessness is, is a serious thing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so there's a lot of kids that the only time that they eat is at school. Absolutely. Because right? they might not have home to go to or you know their home might have no food in it that's, right. that's worth eating. So we wanted to put together like a campaign where for this specific shirt, all the proceeds would go to this charity organization that would that would feed kids, you know, like a food drive, you know, that would take care of kids that were in high school and stuff like that. Um, and then we were like, well, damn, nobody really needs T-shirts. Right. You know, like people need face masks. All right. You know? And so we were just in creative mode, man. We were just in create mode. And since we were already doing the give back campaign, we decided, hey, you know what? Cool. So for every mask that's purchased, we'll also give one to to you know frontliners or those in need. I love so, that. Yeah. So it was real easy, man, because like I said, you know, he's very helpful in a lot of areas. You know, where, where I'm working in, and vice versa. You know, we kind of like just feed off of each other and stuff. We've always done that though. Okay. Good. Yeah, because well, I have siblings too. Um, my brother owns HBCU Drip Incorporated, which is a fashion. Um, blog and Instagram page. Mm -hmm. It's pretty heavy following. I think it's close to about 60,000 followers on it now. But he highlights um, students that go to HBCUs and their and the importance of fashion at an HBCU. And so he streamlines that and he does interviews. And so I'm always running ideas off of him. He's running ideas off of me. And I have a sister that owns her own um, bath, body, and expressions company. So she makes okay. handmade shea butters and, and oils and all kind of different things for the body and bath. Um, and she has a six figure business um, as well. And so us three as siblings, but also creatives, 
it's kind of like an all day thing where we're talking about business. And so yeah. I understand how um, the relationship goes, especially with me also having it's, a brother. It's not easy. You know what I mean? Like it's oh, not nah. something nah. that's easy because especially nah. when you're talking about business, because if right. done the wrong way, if done improperly, it can affect the relationship as a whole. So, you know, you definitely have to tread light. Fortunately, like I said, we've been, this is something that we've been doing this shit since we were nine, 10 years old. We're hustling, mm -hmm. cutting grass, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it was just, we've always just worked together on, on business stuff. Um, but yeah, it's definitely not, it's not something that everybody oh, nah. can do, that's for sure. Oh, no, nah. oh, nah. we, we've had family <laughs> fallouts and, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And then arguments and then, you know, they done, everybody's done with each other. Then you're talking the next day, like nothing happened, you know? I, I yeah. get it. Like, I mean, that, that's that's the that's the beauty of creativity. You know, it pushes you to question yourself, right? Yeah. You think you come in, you come up with a design and you know it's fired and you worked on it for weeks and weeks and weeks and you take it to your brother and he's like, hey, nah, that's trash. Throw that in the trash, bro. Right, right, no. right, right. So I understand. You know, we as creators, we're sensitive. You know what I mean about by you, Erica Badu said it best. You know what I mean? Yeah, we're creative. Incredibly. Absolutely. <laughs> um, how did the pandemic affect your creativity? Whether in a positive way or a negative way? It was all in a positive way, you know, um, because we were able to take nothing and turn it into something, you know. Again, it was all a vision. And that was a cool thing. It was something that we went on a hike one day, right? So when the, when the pandemic first happened, some people, you know, they got, people panicked. Some mm -hmm. people got scared. Some people got lazy. They were watching movies. You know what I mean? People DM me movie suggestions. Right. Hey, watch this movie. It's talking about what's going on right now. Like, bitch, this is on Netflix. I'm not about <laughs> to watch no Netflix movie about a pandemic, bro. Right. You know what I mean? But they're following these series. And I just stayed, you know, productive. I'm not going to say busy. I stayed productive. You know, I was, there was it was, it was never a moment where it was like, oh my God, what's going to happen next? It was like, I know what's going to happen next. Right. Because everything shut down. So I determined what happens next, you know, for me and for right. what's going on over here, you know? Absolutely. Um, so it was like, we we would go hiking. You know, we lived in the hills, in the Hollywood Hills. And I remember one day we went hiking and we, there was like, there was like a mountain top and we found it and it was like this, I don't know, bro. It's, it's hard to explain, but it was like, we both just saw the same exact thing, mm -hmm. but it wasn't an earthly thing. It wasn't something that you could see, you know? It was it was something that we could see, mm -hmm. you know? And we both saw it at the same time and, and we discussed it as we were standing there. And I think if someone walked by it, we thought we were crazy because like there was nothing but sky and mountains and shit, but we just saw a whole operation. And we like, yo, if we do this and move this over here, then it can do this. Oh shit, but if, you know what I mean? And we just like drawing this thing out. And there's so many times where, you know, I hear people say stuff like, oh man, you know, nobody's gonna be wearing masks after three months. Yeah, that was a year and a half, two years ago, they were saying that. Mm -hmm. um, I remember I walked into a store to go and buy a machine and and the guy that worked there was was talking to a customer saying, I don't know why everyone's going crazy in here buying sewing machines. This pandemic is going to be over in like, I think he said something like two or three months. And so the guy he was supposed to be selling the machine to was like, well, shit, I, I guess I don't need this machine then, right? Mm -hmm. So he leaves. He talked himself out of himself. But I overheard the conversation. I was like, I'll take it. Because I know something you don't know. Right. You know? So it just, I don't know, man. It just, it cre create creatively, it was like, I get to create what happens next, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was from an idea and we did it and it was, it's successful. And you know, one thing, one thing I could say about the product um, is that um, I could see the manifestation in it, you know? Yeah. It's not simple at all, even though it's a mask. Um, the architecture behind the product it's something I can tell that the stitching, you know what I mean? The, the tag. It's more than a mask. It's more than it's a more, mask, you know? Like, it's, that's, that's, that. it's, my, it's my name, you know what I mean? Like, that's right. my last name. So, right. like, we stand by that, you know? Like, everything about it. 
you know. And, and, and that's something that I appreciate. Um, I always talk to businesses about products that I use, products that I'm personally invested in. I have 10 plus masks myself. And I've always been attracted to the creativity of it. Um, how would you say, um, you spoke on it a little bit already, but even people that's around you in your circle, your friends, your family, how would you say creativity or the pandemic affected your mental health? Um, did you have any wake up calls? Did you have any, you talked about the manifestations of the things that you created. You talked about a relationship with your brother during that hike and how that personal experience between the two of you all allowed you to paint a picture of where you were or where you are right now. What role did the pandemic play on your mental health as a African-American man? Um, I mean, it was way more than just being an African-American man. It was like, you know, everything happens for a reason, okay? Mm -hmm. And so, like I said, you know, prior to the pandemic, I was an aircraft mechanic. Um, and so during my time as an aircraft mechanic, I was also, I was also married, you know? So I'm married with, you know, kid and, and my, my ex-wife, you know, she was six months pregnant. And, um, and one day I come home and she wants a divorce, right? I can't hmm. understand why, I can't explain to you why, but that did something, you know? And then not being able to, there's nothing I could have done to fix that situation. So that it took a toll on my mental, you know, went to a dark place for a minute. Absolutely. And so fortunately, you know, my brother was there doing his thing and he actually needed some help with his production. And I have experience in manufacturing, you know, like I, I, I used to build planes, you know, I worked on planes. I just know how machines and, and, and things should operate. Mm -hmm. And like literally maybe maybe six to eight months after me moving and getting divorced and moving back to Los Angeles, the world comes to a complete halt. You know? And I felt like the what we did in this short time frame, you know, for me it was like, I would not have been able to do this if I was still married, you know, sure. it wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have been able to, you know, um, and I'm, you know, I'm not going to say anything bad about her because there's nothing bad to say about everything happened for a reason. Absolutely. But this thing that we're talking about now, like we, you know, <clears throat> the mass have gone so far, you know, into different countries and different, you know, cultures and ethnicities, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a thing where everyone wears these face masks, you know, and right. we protected a lot of people and that's not something that we could have done um, at all, you know, had I had I still been married. So for, for me and my mental, it was like kind of a refresher, you know, it was like, yo, I'm on the right path. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm actually doing what I enjoy right now. I love what I'm doing, you know, and we're doing something good for our people. Absolutely. You know, again, man, <laughs> you know, like we're black. You know, so to have done this during the pandemic, we've employed 60, 70 people, you know, we got a factory, we own our own factory, Wow. you know, so for us to have done this during a pandemic as black men, yeah, for my mental, it, it did good. Good, good. Yeah. And, you know, just to, just to echo what you're saying, um, I believe that the universe always aligns itself for my good. And people who also think the same as me believe that as well. As life happens um, to us, we believe that the universe is in direct alignment for to the things that we need and the things that we want, right? Yeah. And 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 I always tell my friends and my family is to always stay on that positive wavelength, you know, um, in order for you to to achieve what you want to achieve. And sometimes some negative experiences have to come with that, but that's the balance of life. And things always work out for the betterment and for the good, you know? Um, and I, and that's that's something that I, I can hear in your voice and there's something for myself as well, um, especially with me and running Black Fly on the Wall, the podcast. Um, you know, it was a, it was a, you know, I had a lot of people in my ear saying, just go virtual, try this, try that. 
And, you know, I'm always made a big push for us to continue to film and to stay safe and adhere to the, the local policies on it, but I always wanted to keep pushing, to keep going, to never quit. Um, and to not just throw in the towel and take a year off or a year and a half off until things open up 100%. But I, I, I saw a space where the content still was needed. And especially while everybody is at home digesting content, you know? And so even with this one-on-one -on -one interview with you, I thought it was important for people to hear it. You know, the man behind the mask, um, just, to, just to get a, a glimpse of, um, of what it takes to be successful during a time where we can honestly look back um, over the years. And the only thing comparable to this is maybe the Great Depression. And that was only from an economic standpoint. This was a health yeah. disparity and an economic standpoint. This is one of the biggest things that happened in the world. It's a global thing, right? And you talked about how people are wearing your mask abroad and not only in the United States. So kudos to you for that. Now, tell me one thing for the entrepreneurs that's listening right now, what are three tips you would give them um, as a successful entrepreneur um, that they can take and apply to their business moving forward to have success? Um, one would be like, don't be afraid of the work. You know, like everybody wants to be rich, but nobody wants to do the work. So mm. I feel like, you know, if you're going to run from the work, you may as well hide from the money. Mm. You know, strong. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, like, <laughs> that's, just, that's hard. Yeah, like it's that. real, bro. Like, because you have to put in work, you know, it's, it's not going to fall out the sky on any of that. You know, the, the, the vision's there, right? And that's the other thing is like, your vision is not their vision. There was plenty of people that said that masks were stupid. Plenty of people that said masks were stupid. Man, look. Okay. You know. Right. And, and, <laughs> and you live in LA. And Los Angeles yeah. County just uh, just reapplied their mask mandate countywide. Yeah. Yeah. Today. No, I saw that. Yeah. I saw so, that. so, you know, so the, the, the market is still there. It's going to always be there. You know? Absolutely. And and again, man, we're talking about here in LA, but what about you know, the world is big. Mm -hmm. you know, I say we made face masks. I didn't say we made face masks for Americans only. Right, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like exactly. it's distribution, you know, like there's there's we, we get in these other countries. But you know, your your vision's not their vision, so don't listen to them. You know, it's not mm -hmm. God didn't grant them that vision, so you can't expect other people to see your vision but if you have somebody that does have that vision and and they believe in your vision you know what i mean because like if you want to go if you want to go fast go alone if you want to go far go together mm -hmm. right so your team is incredibly important absolutely yeah you know? and i think the third thing would be you know dream big dream big uh, be a kid and, and have fun you know, like when we were kids, nobody could tell us that nobody could tell me I couldn't be Spider-Man. You know, right. you fucked up. I said I'm <laughs> Spider-Man. You know what I mean? Nobody's right. going to say I'm not. And so it, it's the same rule applies, man. Like we have fun with it. You know, we work. We work really hard, but we have a really good time. You know, we play hard, but we work really hard and we dream big. And we we shoot for like obstacles and, and goals that are just like ridiculous. And it's so that we can challenge ourselves, mm -hmm. you know? You'd be and surprised you, you, by what you could do if you challenge yourself. Right, and you, you said one thing, the, the, the one thing I liked the most, you said, you said be a kid. And it mm -hmm. took me back, it was nostalgia, man. Like, whenever I was a kid growing up, like, you know, that's when the Tony Hawk video games was good, was yeah, popping. Yeah. The yeah. motocross was going crazy, the dirt bike stuff. Fair and enough. man, we used to be at my grandma's house and we used to take an empty soda can and bend it and put it on the tire so when you ride the bike it makes the in sound like a dirt bike and we was yeah. jumping ramps and stuff like that and you could not tell me i wasn't gonna be in motocross <laughs> that, 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 that was fighting right yeah, and exactly. i love that i love that feeling man i love the feeling um of just going into that that state of utopia and whenever you do do that your brain sends off these endorphins that connects to the universe that attaches along with your goal. You know, you spoke about a team. Like, I love my team, um, and you are 100% right. When you can find people who are like-minded and put them in the same room with a common vision and a common goal, I mean, it is nothing that you all can't achieve. 
Um, I think Rick Ross said it um, the other day. He said, um, he said, he said, he said, I don't want to move fast. I want to move correct. I want to be precise, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's, it's not all about the sprint. It's about the marathon. You know, the late Nipsey Hussle spoke about that all the time. Um, it's the marathon. You know, it's the people that run the marathon that run that win the race, and that's something that um, that I echo on as well. And, and the dream big, man. That's something that um, I I think about daily, multiple multiple times a day. I foresee a life for myself personally. I see I foresee my production company with all these different ventures, and um, what my success now would would, have, would be unattainable if I wasn't drinking. Right. Yeah. You know, my the company all started off with a thought. The fact that I'm interview interviewing you started off with a thought. Um, and one of my favorite quotes is, uh, "What the what the mind what the mind of the man can conceive, it can achieve." And I'm a big I'm a big believer in that. Um, and so, yeah. uh, you know, thank you, bro. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your energy. Um, I want you and Rich to continue doing your thing. Um, continue growing. Um, if there's anything that we can do over here with, on our end, um, I believe in spreading love and we can do that. Um, we can do that. We can do that. Anything you want to leave the people, man? Uh, man, that's it, bro. You know that. And, you know, again, man, uh, the reward is not at the finish line. It's it's in the journey. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So Absolutely. Enjoy it. <laughs> you know, one of the greatest, le- all the greatest lessons you can ever learn is in the journey. Um, yeah. You know, when, when you get to the goal, when you've really been present in the journey, the journey is what you constantly think about. The goal is sweet, but the journey is always something you will never you will never forget. And so uh, peace, love, man. Thank you. Uh, much, much appreciation to you and uh, keep rocking and we'll talk. Absolutely. All right, Appreciate man. It. Appreciate it.